Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to work darning on Tenerife lace. Darning is basically weaving to create solid blocks of thread. It's ever so easy to do and it opens up all sorts of design possibilities because it gives you the effect of solid fabric. I'm going to be using one of our Tenerife lace looms, um, number one in this instance, and a cotton perle number eight or size eight. So let's get started. So to save you the tedium of watching me prepare this, I already worked all of the holding stitches, which is 48, and then stretched the web through every single one of them. So the first part of darning that we're going to look at is the central darning. So for the particular pattern that I'm using, it is going to be a simple double darn, okay? So the double darn meaning that each of these um, loops that have come down to a holding stitch, that's creating two threads. So two being the double. So we're gonna go under two. Usually I start, the one at the top, I'll come straight down and I will start um, my central treatment in whatever way that I'm going to be doing at the one underneath the group of threads here, just to help make it a little tighter. Now, if I look a little awkward, I've got the camera set at an angle that I'm hoping will stop the glare from the lights. You see, you can see it right there um, a little bit as I'm working. So basically, I'm just going to go over two, under two, over two, under two, and get this all nice and um, set together and in the center. The second row needs to be in opposition. So where I went um, under, I need to make sure that I go over and then under the next one. And so I'm going to work um, about a centimeter's worth of rows, which is probably going to be four. Any of the patterns that I write will give you an indication. So move out one centimeter or work three rows or something like that. The measurement isn't vital. It's just to give you an indication of about where you should go. The point about the lace is that it's very um, free flowing. It's not regimented and doesn't need to be regimented in that way. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this, complete this double darning and you will see quite a difference to the center of the medallion. I decided to do three rows. Um, and if I come up close, you can see that now what has happened, I made sure that the th pairs of threads were nice and lined up, nothing crossing over. And you can see that it's actually sort of evened them out and given a nice flat area um, so that we can go ahead and work the next part. So the next instruction for this particular pattern is not four ends for one row. Now, because I've not been told to sort of move out or make any spaces, that means to do the knot right here um, at the last row of the darning. So I'll just take that back out, put it back into focus for you. <laughs> and then we'll work the knot. So 
Tenerife Lace Knot. In case you um, are not familiar with it, this is really the most important thing to learn. So I'm going to bring in this little chart so that you can sort of see what I'm doing a little bit better, hopefully. I'm just going to, so that the angle is similar to what I'm working on, I'm just going to put that there. There we go. So, number one, we come around in a C, all right? And then number two, which is worked sort of at the same time, so we're going to take our needle behind the ones that we want to knot. So this is knotting four ends, so that's two pairs, okay? So if that's there, then we bring the thread up and around, and that's what number two is actually showing, that the thread is coming up and around and underneath the needle, which will lead us to three and four for tightening, okay? So we'll take the needle through. I tend to hold the loop part of the thread here so that I can bring the working thread up and then knot and that will pull it up tight. Okay, so I'll move this piece of paper out of the way now, my little magnet, and work the knots. Now I'm going to work them with my um, loom flat the reason being is because the camera's at a bit of an angle and I have a feeling I might actually knock it um, if I try holding it. And just remember that this is what you can do as well. You know, you don't need to worry about sort of holding it by the handle every time. Pop it flat if you need to. It'll help you to form your knots a little bit better. Now then, as I am hitting the camera, I'll do another couple um, of knots here, and then I will switch off the camera so that I can get this at a good angle and not keep hitting it with my hand as I come up. Okay. I'll just zoom in so you can see what's actually happening here. So I'm knotting four ends or two pairs in this particular case, okay? So there's one row with four ends knotted. Now the instructions now say to move out one centimeter. Again, not an exact science. We're just gonna make a little bit of a guess um, and to knot four ends again. Now I've not been told to split the pairs or change the orientation, so it's just going to be to knot the same four pairs again. Um, also, if I didn't mention, I did put finish this row with another knot at the, at the same one as the starting knot, and that just gives you a nice complete circle as opposed to it going and spiraling out. So again, I'm just going to bring the thread down so that I can create the next row. I'm not cutting it off and starting again or anything like that. And I'll just pop that down so I can get a nice tight. There we go. And as you can see, you can't really tell that I have moved down, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead as before and knot up the next row. There's another row done. And if you notice, because of the holes, the other positions, I can actually follow those and that helps me to keep a little bit straighter as well. So it's something worth considering with some of the designs if your um, lines fall that way. Now, my piece of thread is actually becoming quite short. 
So I'm going to take the opportunity now to actually change the thread. Um, because a lot of people think, well, they, they really do have to use a really long length of thread. To be honest, you are usually best, if you can, to have the web with one length of thread. However, that even that is not always possible. So you can join at that as well. However, joining when you're adding threads, um, when you're working the actual inside part, is fine. It's not a problem. Just make sure that you tie your knots well. So what I like to do, as I say, I've, I've got a double knot here anyways. I've got two knots because of my row. I'm just going to put another, um, almost like a little blanket stitch knot there, just so that I can sort of make sure that that is fastened in And so a double one and nice and tight. Now I'm going to snip leaving a little bit of an end. Um, not much, as you can see, it's only the tiniest amount, but at least that reminds me of where it's at. So if I want to add a little bit of um, textile glue onto it, just to hold it in place, if I think it's not really gone so well, I can go ahead and do that and find it more easily. So I'm just going to cut myself another length and I'm going to attach this length using the Tenerife lace knot. Now because I'm going to come out and work the edge next and I'm going to be working an SC edge or a scalloped edge and the scalloped edge is joining, I'll hold this up, Get this in focus again. So a scallop edge is joining the two that are opposite around um, your holding stitch. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. It'll probably become clearer when I'm actually um, working the stitch. So, so what I will do is add the thread. And as I said, I'm going to use, first I'll start out with a little bit of like a blanket stitch. I go underneath the handle, do I? And get that tied in. Um, and then I can go ahead and work that. You can sort of catch the thread as well, the, the length of the thread. Um, so if you're working your um, Tenerife lace stitch knot, you can sort of go around with both as I'm doing right here, just to give it a little bit of extra security. Um, if you are just going to add your thread as a uh, bit of darning, then again, as we're going to do later, that doesn't matter as much. So again, I'll just snip that tail end so it doesn't irritate me. And we'll go ahead and carry on with the scalloped edge. So I'm taking, let's get this in focus for you. I'm taking one end from one side of the holding stitch and one end from the next holding stitch. So it's that pair that I'm going to join together. And as before, with the basic knot, okay? Don't worry about this tail here. We will be able to tidy that up afterwards. and carry on like this to create a scalloped edge. And you can just see the scallop starting to form. I like to try to make my scalloped edge as close 
to the holding stitches as possible. So I'll just zoom in so you can see. So you've got little scallops running along the top there. Okay, so I'll carry on and do this to get to the next stage. And here we are, full circle again. That little tail that was looped up, I've pulled it straight. And then while I have worked a knot um, at the base of that uh, connecting knot, I'm just going to work another one and I'm going to catch in that as well underneath those threads, just so that I can give it a little bit more strength there. Now I'm going to snip this off because the pattern actually tells me to fasten off at this point. And so fastening off is just as before, making sure that you have a nice firm knot. So, I mean, that's a pretty medallion. But now we're going to darn it. We're going to add some extra interest according to the pattern. Now, my patterns show um, darning usually as a grayed out area. This is so that you can see a general idea of where you're supposed to place the darning. Um, it isn't any hard and fast rules. Um, again, it's, it's good to just sort of go with the flow when you're working on something like this. So I'm going to begin by fastening on my thread to a section because according to the pattern, the grayed areas are showing that I need to darn between three, um, so like that, between three groups, so down from three knots. Now I can choose to darn this um, by going in and out of every one of the individual threads there, but that would take me quite a long time. So instead, I'm just going to fasten on, I'm actually going to fasten on to the centerpiece because that way I can weave in a little bit and not really notice. So let's just, hang on, let's do this properly. I'm going to just flip that round so that I'm going through and creating a little bit of a knot there. Just a single knot. And then I'll keep this tail alongside one of those threads. Then I'm just going to go under, over, under. And then I'm going to come back which means I'm going over, then under the center one, and then effectively over the third, and then back again. And so I'm just working back and forth, and I'm working out from the center to the outside. I've just caught that thread there. Now, if that happens to you, just go ahead, unthread your needle, and bring it back. That's probably the most awkward thing that will happen to you. So let's zoom in really close and you can see that I'm basically gonna go back and forth over these three threads and I'm gonna go right until these knots, okay? And then I'll move my thread along to the next group. So I'll show you that when I get to that point. I'm just gonna go back and forth and do the darning on this one section. So there's one section with the darning in place. Now, the easiest way to move along with a piece such as this is to just simply take your working thread, latch it underneath your knot stitch towards the center, and then you can move out to the next section. Don't pull this too hard because if you pull this too hard, you'll get, um, here I'll show you actually, you'll get a loop and that will pull down your threads. So that's one way. 
The other way is you can make a feature of it and you can wrap it around the threads here and then work the next one down. Now, if you do that, of course, you'll only have like every other that will be wrapped. So you have to consider your design if you're going to do that, which is why going back to the center is probably the easiest. Now, I know that people are going to say, oh, yeah, but you can see that, but mm, that's ugly. But with lace, there's so much else going on. This will be at the back of the piece. You probably won't even notice. And if it really, really bothers you, you can weave it in and out a little bit as well. I've got this tail that I wove over as we was doing the darning. So I can just snip that one now. And of course, that excess end is now encased in there as well. So this design, I'm going to be skipping one of these spokes. And so I'll weave over the next three. Now, it doesn't matter which direction that you work in. Um, work whichever direction suits you best. And which suits the pattern best. And then just work your darning. I think I caught a bit of the thread there, so it's just a little bit up. So I'll unthread the needle and pull that back. And you just can carry on working the darning. So again, I'm going to carry on and do that because you don't need to see me weaving back and forth all of the way around this medallion. And there we have it. All of the sections now darned. I've brought the thread along tucked it under the knot stitch as I have with all of the others. And now I'm going to just fasten it underneath some of those threads there. Um, because now we're going to do the reveal. And so snip that a little bit. I will tie this end to the starting end when I've removed the medallion. So let's go ahead and do that. Turn over, get you in focus. Let's take away that little piece of tape that was holding that at tension. Now I'm going to cut my holding stitches. Try to remember to always cut your holding stitches from the back because that way you're not going to run the risk of doing any damage to all of that lovely work that you've done at the front. This is also a very satisfying way of getting rid of threads that you don't really like. <laughs> There's always some in our stash, isn't there? Okay, so turn over. Gently lift that off. And now I'm going to take all of those holding stitches out of the scalloped edge loop. And remember to be a little gentle just in case you have managed to split through the threads like that one. You see, I, I've managed to split, to stitch right through my holding sti um, stitch. So I don't want to pull any of my medallion out of um, alignment. So if you're a little gentle, just make sure that you just take your time a little bit. Okay, so there's my holding stitches all removed bit of green fluff there and now we're going to turn over you know take that starting thread through to the back now I can tie these two ends together in a nice tight knot A 
I always like to add a third. You'll find me doing that a lot. Now, if you want to, you can also weave these through, these ends through a little bit, just so that you don't have them um, sticking up. Just make sure that you don't go through to the front. This will just help to add a little bit of a um, tidier edge so you can pull up and snip. And do um, use scissors if you prefer. I just happened to have left my scissors in the other room and so I thought, well, I'll use my snips. The only thing you have to be careful of with snips, of course, is that you don't snip the wrong bit, which I have been known to do. Right, so that's the back. And as you can see, even that with the back, you can barely see the knots. I did have to add another length of thread. So the length of thread that I used for that darning, I only got sort of three petals, if um, you'd like to call them that. And then we have turnover, and there is the front of our medallion. So you can see that by adding um, darning and those solid areas of color, uh, well, in this case it's white, but you can use color, but the solid areas, you can add tone and pattern to your medallions that are a little bit more than just the basic sun designs. Thank you very much for watching. Um, do please hit subscribe, like, share, and comment, you know, let me know what kind of videos you'd like, and I'll see what I can do. Thank you again. You take care. Bye-bye.